Okay, so a very good evening to all of you. In this video, we're going to start talking about one of the most important skin disorders, which is pemphigus. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about pemphigus, including what it is, what are its variants, what are vesicles and what are bullae, what is pemphigus vulgaris, and what are its clinical features, histopathological features, diagnostic test, and treatment. We'll divide this topic into two halves. Okay, and we'll study all of it in detail. For more such videos, you can head on to the channel and check out our playlist on oral pathology, oral medicine, and more topics. So getting right into pemphigus, let's look at the definition first. Pemphigus is a group of autoimmune diseases. That means there are cells that attack one's own body, right? Normally, your white blood cells protect you from external agents, but here they attack one's own body. How they attack is their targets are the mucous membrane and the skin, and here they cause blisters. So it is a group of autoimmune diseases which causes blisters on the skin and mucous membrane. And histologically, it is characterized by intraepidermal vesicles and immunologically by IgG antibodies. So let me show you in the diagram. Here you have a vesicle or a blister that has formed on the skin. Histologically, I would see a vesicle within the epithelium. This is the epithelium. This is the basement membrane. This is the connective tissue. So I see vesicle and fluid formation within the epithelium. And immunologically, I see that IgG antibodies are involved in this. The word pemphigus is literally derived from pemphix, which means a blister. So again, quickly revising, this is an autoimmune disease against one's own body. It causes blisters where the targets are your skin and mucous membrane. Histologically, there is an intraepithelial vesicle and immunologically, there are IgG type of antibodies and the targets of these are your uh, keratinocytes, which are the cells in your epithelium. Now, before we move further into the variants of pemphigus, let us understand what are the different types of blisters. So, I told you that it causes blisters. Blisters are of two types, which is the vesicles and bulla. Whenever you have a elevation on the surface of the skin, which is less than 0.5 centimeter and it is filled with fluid, it is called a vesicle. If it is greater than 0.5 centimeter, it is called a bulla. So this is nothing but an elevation on the skin, which is filled with fluid. If it is less than 0.5, it is a vesicle. If it is more than 0.5, it is a bulla. Coming to the variants of pemphigus, there are three main variants, which is the pemphigus vulgaris, this is the most common variant and it also includes pemphigus vegetal. The second most important variant is pemphigus polyaceous, which affects your superficial layers of the skin. The third variant is the paraneoplastic pemphigus, which is always associated with an underlying malignancy. Okay, underlying malignancy, most commonly Hodgkin's lymphoma or chronic lymphocytic leukemia. In the recent decade, we have also come across newer forms such as IgA pemphigus. Instead of IgG, this is IgA pemphigus and pemphigus herpetiforms. Okay, so, so far we have talked about what is pemphigus. We have talked about what is a vesicle, what is a bulla. We have talked about its variants. And now we'll talk about pemphigus vulgaris. So why we need to study pemphigus vulgaris is because it is the most common form of pemphigus up to 70% of all cases. Here, there are skin lesions and oral lesions. So here you have blisters which are occurring on the skin and then you have, uh, you know, eroded surface which is occurring under the tongue and on the lips. But the characteristic thing is that almost 50% of the patients, 50 to 80% of the patients have oral cavity involvement. And this occurs five to six months before the skin lesions. So it is very important to diagnose it early. The oral lesions are also difficult to resolve with therapy and thus are described as the first to go, first to show and the last to go. 
right? So here you have the most common variant pemphigus vulgaris. The oral lesions are very common and they precede the cutaneous lesions. So talking about pemphigus vulgaris, this is an autoimmune disease. Pemphigus was a group of autoimmune diseases. Pemphigus vulgaris is an autoimmune disease which causes blistering in the skin and mucous membranes, intraepithelial vesicle and circulating antibodies against the keratinocytes of your epithelium. In the pathogenesis, let us understand what happens exactly. So there are antibodies which are directed against desmoglein 3 and 1, which are the components of your desmosomes. So let us understand this here. Now here I have the histological picture showing you epithelium. Here is the basement membrane and here is the connective tissue. In this diagram, I've enlarged it. These are your keratinocytes, the cells that form the epithelium. This is the base, this is the epithelium, this is the basement membrane, and below this you have the connective tissue. Now there are certain cells which are called desmosomes. Okay, these are structures called desmosomes, which act like glue and hold together your keratinocytes. What happens in pemphigus is there is a group of antibodies which is formed, IgG antibodies, which go and attack components of the desmosomes and cause them to split, right? So the inhibition of the molecular interaction between keratinocytes, which is responsible for cell addition, is broken and this causes a split within the epithelium, which is above the basal layer okay this is the basement membrane it is above it okay so let us quickly revise what i have just spoken i have said there is a group of antibodies igg antibodies that are formed against desmosomes desmosomes are nothing but structures that act to glue together keratinocytes so what this does is causes inhibition of cell addition and intraepithelial split the predisposing factors for this is drugs, diet, radiation, stress, surgery, pregnancy, virus, and pesticides. Coming to the clinical features, it is seen in older individuals in all races, and there is an equal gender predilection. In the presentation, this is very important, so start focusing here. It is characterized by the appearance of, as I've told you, blisters. These may be vesicles or bullae, depending on their size, and can vary in size. Okay, from few millimeters to several centimeters and can cover large areas of the skin. Initially, these are filled with fluid, but soon may become purulent or sanguineous. So here in this diagram, you, you can clearly appreciate a small blister that has occurred on the skin. It can vary in size. Initially, it is uh, composed of a thin watery fluid which may eventually become purulent. Now, if this blister ruptures, you will have a raw eroded surface. So, this is also a common presentation. Here you had a blister which has ruptured and left an eroded surface. Now, there are two characteristic signs that you see in pemphigus which is called the Nikolsky sign and the Aspo Hansen sign. So let us start by talking about these. So the Nikolsky sign is nothing, but if, if I have a blister over here and if I rub the unaffected skin, okay, unaffected skin, I would see splitting away of the epithelium. Okay, splitting away of the epithelium, the superficial epidermis splits away from the deep dermis. Why this occurs is because of prevesicular, perivesicular edema, right? So here you have the splitting away of the, or the loss of epithelium, which occurs when you rub unaffected skin, which is because of edema formation between these two. And this occurs under oblique pressure. 
the aspo hansen sign is the indirect nikolsky sign right what happens here is if i have a bulla here i have marked it up till here right i have marked that it extends up till here now if i were to exert pressure on it i would see that the bulla extends right this bulla was up till here but now it has extended up till here right so the mark is still over here but the bulla has extended in size this is the asbo hansen sign now the course of pemphigus vulgaris is variable it can either lead to death or recovery but remember that this is a chronic disease so it is it might be characterized by exacerbations and remissions of the year oral manifestations as i've told you mucous membranes are the first to be affected in 50 to 80% of the cases they precede the cutaneous uh, lesions by months and one thing you should remember is that intact bullae are rare in the oral cavity why because this is a site of high irritation so they tend to rupture so what you notice clinically are irregularly shaped gingival buccal or palatine erosions which extend peripherally they can involve any part of the oral cavity and if they involve the larynx they will cause hoarseness of the voice and inability to eat or drink other mucosal surfaces other than the oral cavity involved can be a conjunctiva of the eye esophagus labia vagina cervix penis urethra and anus another variant that we had spoken of pemphigus vulgaris was pemphigus vegetans which is an uncommon variant of pemphigus vulgaris already pemphigus vulgaris occurs in 1 to 5 individuals in 1 million so pemphigus vegetans occurs in 1 to 2% of that okay the median age of onset is the same oral involvement is very common which is characterized by the presence of sulci and gyri which are present on the dorsal surface of the tongue right the surface facing you is the dorsal surface so there are sulci and gyri present here and you also have these uh, cauliflower shaped uh, lesions in the axilla and the inguinal regions there are two variants of it which are the newman type and the halopio type so we'll stop here let's quickly revise what we have studied we have studied pemphigus is a group of autoimmune diseases causing blisters targets are the skin and the mucous membrane histologically characterized by vesicles and immunologically by igg antibodies we have studied what are vesicles what are bulla what are the variants of pemphigus three main which is vulgaris polyaceous and paraneoplastic we have studied pemphigus vulgaris we have studied the pathogenesis where anti auto antibodies are directed against intercellular substance which is your desmosomes clinically we saw the presence of blisters which contain watery fluid which might rupture we have seen the oral lesions and we have also seen pemphigus vegetans right in the next video we will talk about the histological features diagnostic tests and treatment so with this i have some questions for you name the variants of pemphigus where do you see cerebriform tongue pemphigus is characterized by which of the following is it acanthosis acantholysis hyperautokeratosis or hyperparakeratosis and what is the nikolsky sign so with this i conclude the video thank you for watching i hope this video helps you and have a good day ahead